Hi everybody, this is Eugene O'Loughlin and welcome to my series of short how-to videos. In this video, we're going to learn how to perform matrix operations in R. So from time to time when you're working with, with, with matrices in R, you might have two matrices and you'd like to be able to perform some mathematical operations using two separate matrices. So what I have done here is I have downloaded uh, in, uh, onto my uh, computer some data taken from the uh, basketball data taken from the NBA.com website. So on line four and line five here, I'm reading a file called 56a.data underscore file dot CSV. So this is a CSV file containing uh, basketball data about the number of games played over a 10 year period by 10 well-known basketball players. So this file and also the second file, 56b underscore data underscore file dot CSV, plus all data files and R scripts used in this series of, of, data, of videos are available in my GitHub and you'll find a link to that in the information area beneath the video on the YouTube page. So let me read in the first uh, data file and that stored a matrix called uh, games.mba and the second uh, file, I'm going to read that, run this line six to seven, read these in and um, we have um, our two files uh, listed in here. We can see in our global environment area that uh, the both um, um, sets of data are created here. So we've got 10 observations of 10 variables. Note that when I'm reading in the files, I have set check.names equal to false. So what that does is it will remove the letter X from the column names and row.names equal one will remove the first column of numbers. So if you leave that out, your outputs will not look neat and tidy. So let me print out the uh, the two uh, matrices. So this, first of all, is the number of games played by each of these 10 well-known players over a 10-year period. So for example, we can see in the output here that in 2005, Kobe Bryant played 80 games, and in 2006, he played 77 games, and so on for all the other players. If I print out then the number of field goals that each player has scored uh, during the season, we can see that Kobe Bryant in 2005 scored 978 field goals and so on over the years for all the other players. So I've now got two matrices here and, what, and I, I can now start to perform some mathematical operations using these two matrices. Now I'm only going to just do one or two here. So for example, I know the number of games uh, each player played uh, because it's in the data file. I know the number of field goals they scored over the season. But what if I want to find out how many field goals does each player score uh, uh, per game on average? So that's a fairly straightforward calculation here. So I'm going to, that will be the field goals NBA matrix divided by the games NBA matrix. So let's just do that. Field goals NBA divided by, and I'm just, you don't need the space here. I'm just putting the space after the before and after the division sign to make this a little bit more readable. And divide this by the number of games NBA. So when I perform this operation here, we can see we get our output and the numbers of uh, points scored per game for each player. Now that looks a little bit um, awkward to read out. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to round the numbers. So uh, line number 11, I'm going to copy that uh, onto my clipboard and then use the round function, open and close brackets. And this will allow me then to round the output. So inside in the brackets, paste in the formula that I have just um, done, add in a comma, and then add in the number of decimal places that I want to use. And in my case, I'm just going to have one decimal place. So when I run this uh, piece of code, we can see that we get the um, output here in a much neater and tidier format. So this allows us to do things like ask um, how many game uh, goals have been scored per game. If you read in, you can do this with other matrices. You, you, we have done division here. You can do, do add, you can do, do um, uh, subtract, uh, multiply, uh, any of the mathematical operations. You can do this across the same matrices here. Finally, in this particular example, you might notice that there is a null value for Derek Rose in the year uh, 2012. And if we go back through the outputs, you will see that in the uh, number of games played, Derek Rose played no games in that year and also uh, scored no field goals in that year. So that is the reason why we have this um, strange looking piece of output for Derek in the 2012 season. So what I encourage you to do is, is to uh, try this with your own matrices, so see what you can do. Uh, you don't have to combine the data in separate files and then perform them. You can do all these matrix operations within the R environment. So that's how you perform matrix operations in R. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you for your attention.